Hi, I'm Alistair. I'm a games designer. Now, normally in this channel, I create videos about how you can use different pieces of technology to create escape room puzzles. In this video, I want to show how you can use technology in a slightly different way in an escape room. Um, particularly, I want to show you how you can create a sound activated light like this one and use it as part of a clue delivery system. So in an escape room, players can get clues given to them by lots of different methods. Um, sometimes there is a video display screen that displays text hints. Um, sometimes they might have a walkie talkie that they have audio hints. And sometimes there's something called the voice of God. So this is where a games master who's been watching players from a control room over a, a video feed or something like that, they speak into a tannoy or a microphone system and their voice is broadcast through speakers in the room. Now, the reason it's called voice of God is because normally the clues delivered by this um, kind of aren't attributed to any particular object or character in the room. They kind of just appear from this higher being somewhere. But sometimes it can be nice to actually personify your clue delivery system. So, I mean, I really like the aesthetics of this kind of light fitting here. It looks to me like a kind of a slightly sad robotic eye, but it could also be, um, you know, some kind of AI that was watching over players. It would fit quite well in many sci-fi um, sort of scenarios, I think. And it's simply got a, a 12 volt uh, lamp inside it, which I've got wired to an Arduino. And the DC 12 volt supply is being fed from a, a line level input. Um, now, in my case here, I'm just using the microphone which I'm speaking to you through. But in an escape room, you could easily wire that into the audio feed of how your games master is uh, communicating their voice of God to the players. OK, so here's uh, an illustration of the wiring I'm using. There are a few uh, tricky bits to explain, so I'll try to go over those uh, just one at a time. Let's start off with the input side of things. So up here I've got a 3.5mm jack input, and this would be where you'd connect the line out signal from your sound system. So however you were transmitting your voice of God uh, into your escape room, you'd plug a line out signal from that into this uh, jack here. And we're using two pins from that. We're using the sleeve, which goes to ground, and we're also using the tip signal, which I've got coming in here. This is um, because we're treating it as a mono audio signal. Um, we just want to get the overall amplitude of the sound. So we're just taking one pin here. If it was a stereo signal, you'd use these other pins as well. OK, now, um, when you speak into a microphone, what happens is the waveform of the sound that is detected is converted into uh, an electrical voltage. But uh, that voltage is an uh, AC current, so it, it has both positive and negative voltage. Um, so the, the kind of the waveform that you're familiar with seeing is normally based around zero volts and it goes up and down from that base point. Now, an Arduino has analog input pins, but these are only capable of receiving positive DC voltage, so between 0 and 5 volts. So even though the, the, the voltage that we're actually getting on the line level is quite low, for a line level input it's typically under a volt, um, oscillating either side of that zero value, but it does have uh, even a small negative voltage could damage the Arduino pins here. So what we want to do is we want to apply a, a bias to that waveform that's generated that kind of, instead of being oscillating around a zero volt mark, we want to oscillate around the midpoint that can be read by the Arduino, which is two and a half volts. Um, so what the way we do that is uh, we create a voltage divider here. So this resistor and this resistor here, these are uh, resistors of equal value. It doesn't actually matter too much what that value is, um, but they need to be the same. You'll notice that this one here is connected to the five volt rail across the top. And this one here is connected to ground. So uh, voltage drops in uh, proportion with the resistance. So if these are of equal resistance, then of this 5 volt here, between 5 volt and ground, 2.5 volts is lost across this resistor, and the other 2.5 volts is lost across this resistor. So if we take our voltage input from our uh, line-in signal here, 
and we read it in at the midpoint between these two resistors, we're effectively adding two and a half volts on, and it's a way of um, biasing that signal. Now, um, it goes through a capacitor on the way. This is going to act as a, as a, a buffer, and it also couples the signal so that the resistors don't affect the um, DC component of the audio input. Don't worry too much about that. Um, the, the, the important thing to worry about is uh, the, that these are of equal value. Like I say, we pass the input into here, and this may only be um, measured in millivolts. Like I say, typical line level signal may be up to maybe one volt. You wouldn't want to plug in the line out from a power amplifier in here. So, you know, like a stage power amplifier, that might be many, many more times the voltage. But the typical line out signal from a, an audio device, like, you know, your PC line out socket or, um, you know, on a, on a speaker system or something like that, that would probably be only up to a voltage either way. So we bias it up to two and a half volts and then we can comfortably uh, go one volt either side of that and still be within range of the analog input pins here. So that's the input side of things. And then uh, what we're going to do in the code is we're going to read the amplitude of that signal that's received on the analog input pin. And based on that, what we want to do is to control the uh, power supply to this light on the other side. So we've got a separate 12 volt power supply that's being supplied to the light here. And um, I'm going via a, a logic level MOSFET on the way, which we want to kind of ramp this voltage up and down to make the light glow uh, brighter or less bright, depending on the volume of the audio input. So to do that, um, so a MOSFET has, has three pins. It has the gate pin on the left hand side, and that is connected to pin three on the Arduino. The reason I'm using pin three is because I don't just want to turn the light all the way on and all the way off, I want to be able to fade it up and down. And to do that, I'm going to use um, PWM. So although this is a, a digital output pin, I can effectively send an analog uh, or a, a smooth range of values from that pin by, by using what's called PWM. So this is where you kind of send an on off value uh, very quickly and depending on the rate at which you, the, the pulses at which you send those on values, you can use it to achieve a smooth fading effect. So um, pins three, five, uh, I think uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, I can't remember exactly, but some of the output pins on an Arduino are PWM enabled, um, and three and five are definitely two of them. So that's the ones uh, I'm using as an output here. That's going to go to the gate pin, and I've also got a pull down resistor on the gate pin that's going to pull down that signal to ground to make sure that uh, if no signal is received, then that is pulled completely off. The other two pins on the MOSFET, uh, the one in the middle here, that's the drain pin, and that is connected to the uh, kind of the output side of the LED here. So I've got a 12 volt power supply, the positive is going straight to the light, and then the return signal here is going to the drain pin in the middle. And when a uh, signal is written here to the gate pin, when a small voltage is applied at the gate, um, which the Arduino is capable of writing, what's going to happen is that's going to let that larger 12 volt value flow between the drain and the source. So the source just goes straight down to ground. Um, and if a depending on the on the proportion of the voltage so the size of the voltage applied at the gate a larger amount of the voltage is going to be allowed through here that's how we're going to be able to achieve this fading uh, signal of the light by varying the the pwm strength of the signal here so we're going to do an analog right on the d3 pin and that's going to control the voltage sent to the light so here's the arduino code um, so there's not too much to it. First of all, we define the pin, the analog pin that the audio input is connected to. And we also define a constant. So rather than just taking a raw reading of the microphone level and using that to set the light intensity, I'm keeping a, an exponential moving average. So that's what EMA does. And this alpha here defines the uh, decay rate. So how quickly, how much smooth that signal is. It just prevents the light from flickering uh, too much. It provides a slightly smoother signal. Uh, so you can experiment with different values between 0 and 1 for that. 
Um, and then we also define a global variable that will actually keep track of what the, the current smoothed value is. So that's there. I mean, you, if you want more information about this, you can look it up on Wikipedia or whatever. In the setup function, we'll just initialize a serial connection, uh, which we'll use for debugging the values to the serial monitor. And then in the loop, the process we do is, first of all, like I said, we take the, the raw reading from that audio input pin. And then what we do is we work out, well, how much is that uh, absolutely deviated from the midpoint? So remember, we're biasing it to the midpoint of two and a half volts. So that should read as a value of 512 because an analog input on the Arduino, uh, the voltage from 0 to 5 corresponds to an analog uh, reading of 0 to 1023. So if we take off 512 from the reading, that will remove the uh, the midpoint bias that we've added. And then we take the absolute value because we've got a waveform that's uh, oscillating up and down, but uh, we don't really care whether it's positive or negative. We just want to know absolutely uh, how intense that sound or how loud that sound was. So we take the absolute value of that. And then we plug that into our smoothing function. So this is what we've got here. So what we do is we uh, take that alpha value that we defined at the top, uh, we take that proportion of the most recent reading, and we take the remainder, so 1 minus that proportion, of the previous reading. So the higher this value is, the greater weighting there's going to be on the most recent value. Uh, so there's... Um, you know, going to be a more immediate effect if there's a spike in the sound. The lower this value is, it, there's going to be a much smoother line, but there's also going to be more lag in terms of the light responding to the level of input uh, changing as well. So you can like toy around with different values of that. So that gives us our, our output uh, function there, and I'm just plotting that to the serial monitor so you can actually see what that looks like. And then what we've now got, we've got a value here um, that is based on our line level signal and we need to turn that into uh, an intensity that we want to set the light to. So PWN values for the MOSFET, they range between 0 and 255. Um, this value here, the exact range of values that that will cover really depends on your sound setup, um, on the line level that you're using, on the volume level you've got it set to, all these things like that. So for me, uh, values between 20 and 100 worked well for the range that I wanted to capture. If you set this too low, then what you'll do is you'll have the light sort of flickering when there's not really any signal on the line. If you set it too high, obviously it, uh, you'd actually have to speak louder to get the light to activate in the first place. So um, what you really need to do is plot this value here on the serial plot of the Arduino to work out what values you're getting in your particular setup and then uh, set these ones here to correspond to them, to the range of values which is you know normal speaking volume in your line out signal. Uh, then we'll just make sure that we don't have any stray values which have fallen below zero or above 255, so we'll just call the constraint function. And finally, we'll use the analog write to send, like I say, that PWM signal, which is going to smoothly set the level of the voltage allowed through that 12 volt supply to the LED based on the intensity of the audio line-in signal. That's it.